everybody, welcome back to Fresh Outlook, I'm TWB. Well, think about your life before you had a smartphone. Probably a very different existence, right? Well, this year is big business for smartphones. Even BlackBerry has decided to go smarter. Finally, take a look. The two devices have unique features. One with a physical keyboard called the Q10 and a touchscreen handset dubbed Z10. The launch is critical to BlackBerry. It was the dominant smartphone maker before the iPhone and the Google Android operating system. Over the past four years, the stock has dropped as much as 90% below its 2008 peak, but now the stocks are slowly picking up. And now we intend, as RIM, to lead the move from mobile communications to mobile computing, to true mobile computing. The new device also starts with some 70,000 applications and is targeted at creative entrepreneurs and women, especially working mothers who lead a busy life. To that end, the company appointed pop star Alicia Keys as global creative director. Yeah, I mean, we were just saying, it's amazing BlackBerry is still around. Like, are those guys still in business? <laughs> I thought they were gone. Because, I didn't even yeah, know they're, they're still around. Right? <laughs> but I have to say, if, when, sometimes when you watch uh, reality TV, which I never do, um, <laughs> sometimes you see celebrities using Blackberries. Yeah. And, you know, everyone's all about their iPhones and their Androids. And I look at them and I go, wow, they're really using a BlackBerry? But I feel like it's a secondary device. They have the BlackBerry for... And a smartphone. And a smartphone. Right. So, I mean, first off, let's get into it. Uh, first off, uh, you know, are you surprised that BlackBerry's finally starting to enter the smartphone? I, I'm landscape? wondering what took them so long to come. Right, too late. And, and it might, and it <laughs> we'll might be too late. Yeah. But I think what you're talking about, Taryn, is important, which is the way you felt about having a BlackBerry and using a BlackBerry has not really been replicated by the iPhone or the Joy. I mean, right. they used to call them Crackberries, crackberries right? Because right. people <laughs> were on them constantly. Well, because it's basically just an email keyboard. device. It was the email device and the immediacy of email on it. So it'd be interesting to see if they somehow find that kind of niche. There's no way for BlackBerry to recover the lost market share with iPhone no. and, and the ways in which Droid has been growing sort right. of at this yeah. incredibly how, how fast How are they paying rate. their bills? <laughs> I think this is a Hail Mary. I mean, you know, we'll see if it works, but I doubt it. Yeah, effort. I think it's a last ditch effort. Are they still effort. keeping the keyboard? For one version, they are. They are. Okay. And, right. uh, and I think people who like the tactile that, keyboard yeah. interface exactly. are going right. to My wife, is a, she held yeah. on for such a long time because she loved the Yeah, I was one of those people, but yeah. I actually converted. I actually, yeah, uh, ultimately did, But now everyone's used to these touch the touch screen actually, typing. I don't know if we're going to go yeah. back to the... I mean, you're going to go from a Porsche to a Pinto, you know, back to that. It's functional, but it's no fun. It's not cool. And it's just not as good as a device. I actually use a microphone, you know, you speak into it and yeah. they don't and it actually works well on my phone um let's just get into this idea of how smartphones have have they made our lives smarter for better for worse uh the pros outweigh the cons uh what, what do we think I mean, for certain professions, I mean, if you're in media or if, if you're a professor and in your media like I am, having access to your email around the clock is really, really important. So, and actually access to the web on mm -hmm. your person is important too. So yes, I don't know if it makes us smarter. I think it dampens some of the sort of human to human interaction, but now that they're here, I don't know what, you know, I don't what know. Would how you do so, what would you do without it? I mean, how did we get around? I mean, right. in big cities, everyone's walking around with the maps in their hand. Yeah. I mean, how did you navigate right, before? You can't, I mean, can you imagine going back five, 10 years ago? No. How would you life would be right. without being able to access your calendar, being right. able to see. But look at, I know. mean, our parents' generation survived. They somehow came through with flying yeah, colors. Yeah, but would you want to go back to that? How <laughs> awful would that be? I'm mean, thinking our lives are way better. And you've got there's Twitter something to be said Facebook about simplicity and, 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 you know, having to really fight to get from A to B, not press a button. Well, they know? don't, I mean, you don't have to use it. I mean, but mm -hmm. your life is just, I think it's great. I think it does make us smarter. I think it makes us more aware. It's interesting, mm -hmm. uh, fascinating, you know, with it Twitter is. and Facebook and, you know, and being involved in media and really just anything <clears> in life. I think it makes, makes right. it Right. better and, and you just have more information I think all the time. It, just in terms of being uh, just in the media being, being uh, exposed to news headlines. I mean, it's That's so, right. it's so like immediate. That. You don't have to yeah. wait to the six o'clock evening news right. to find out what people are talking the about. They're late. Right. The six o'clock evening news. They, yeah. they get it from Twitter. Yeah. And they get it That's from right. the smartphone. It's really amazing. Right. right. Also, another thing sure. people don't talk about much, but smartphones close the technology lag or mm -hmm. the technology gap. So when you talked about personal computers, poor people and people of color and women were lagging behind right. uh, mainstream folk in terms of being able to acquire computers. But smartphones have closed that gap. Happen so that people who can't afford to buy a right. PC can't afford to buy a Droid or, or right. an iPhone True, and have access to but, the internet but information. But do, do you run the risk of being left behind socially and economically if you don't have one of yes. these? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, you are. You are behind. Right. It is okay. What it is. okay. It's like, what? You didn't hear that? You know, whenever sure. you have your right. smartphone, right. Right. some people are We like, just oh, were well. talking about a YouTube clip that I haven't seen yet, and you guys probably saw that on your PDAs or Right. you're going to pull it up in a minute now, are you? What do you mean? You're in education, James. Some stats. According to a study commissioned by Verizon, no less, 39% of all 
all American students in grades six through eight use a smartphone for homework. 31% yes. use a tablet for homework. Yes. More than 600 school districts now require entire grade levels to have an iPad, including public schools in Absolutely. Texas, Utah, Kentucky. I mean, well, I don't know. Listen, I, what part of this is some of this is green economy stuff moving more towards a paperless economy. Uh, also, part of it is just what we just talked about in the last segment that we're closing the technology gap. And that's really, really important for a lot of different public school systems. At the end of the day, we should be suspicious, but also grateful about the kind of technology that we have. And, and when you think about smartphones, the ability to close that technology gap and to use it for educational purposes, I think that sort of outstrips all the negative things. So that, yes, there's terrible things that circulate on the internet. There's a lot of stupid mm -hmm. uses of Twitter and Facebook, so on mm -hmm. and so forth. But it doesn't take away from the educational potential of those things. I and mean, for schools mm -hmm. that don't have the funding or their poor areas right. in the country, you yes. know, they have access to what everyone else does, which is nice work before they it's didn't. It's an equalizer. What are the sure. downsides, though, here of, of such a, um, you know, a digitally dependent culture and educational well, it system. It just controls you. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to talk to you. I'm going to text you. I'm going to text you when you're I sitting right there. Human, that <laughs> happens do that. all the time. Human, it does. I think human interaction You're is always one of accessible. I mean, yeah, you a, can't run away that's now. That's right. You know? It's changing how we are as humans. We're more cyborgish than we want to think. We are tied to this technology in ways mm -hmm. that I don't think we'll ever be able to get away from. Do you all check your smartphones during the break? I mean, you have a tablet. Yes. You're using a tablet. I'm, yes. I'm charging mine right now, but if it was here, I usually do. Right. Yeah, definitely. It's either this or the phone for sure. Right. But just some stats 235 million Americans use mobile devices out of 310 million people in the United That's States. That's a lot. Um, 250 million are over the age of 14. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, and the technology is here to stay. I right. Mean, it's here, and again, I wouldn't. I don't want people to be put off by the negative uses of it. Right. So, so let's think about what we can do positively. What I think there's a lot that that can be done. Another thing that we're going to become more and more vulnerable to is cyber attacks and different cyber crimes. And so, mm -hmm. when you live your life and your whole existence is online. Things like identity theft and different kinds of hacking schemes and things of that nature will become more and more vulnerable. I don't to know. I things. just I, I remember writing research papers in high school, going to the library, the Dewey <laughs> Decimal System, the How card you catalog, <laughs> you know, Encyclopedia Britannica. I mean, all that was it really built you as a human being and as a student. Whereas now, it's you type in a few words and it's all at your fingertips. It doesn't make you. It's true. Doesn't make you find the information, it open it up. I mean, it's yeah, it's a whole different yeah. skill set that this generation mm -hmm. isn't isn't developing. Well, I think, I think it's a loss. I mean, look a how good I point. turned out. <laughs> well, you turned out great. <laughs> you know, listen, but I'm whole, what you're talking about, about in terms of search and discovery is really, really important. But what we need to be thinking about is how you apply that to the medium that we're using right now. And so now there's a lot more information. And it's mm -hmm. about managing that information and being able to get to it and be able to discern what's authentic about it as opposed to the whole process of like reading books and spending time in archives. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. We just have to understand what the terms right. are and what we're dealing with. With that, I have to uh, close up shop. But <laughs> thank you guys for being here. It's been great having our guest panelists. Uh, great job. Uh, and that's all the time we have. I want to thank our all-star panel, of course, for their extremely fresh outlooks. Remember, if you have a fresh outlook, we want to hear about it. Tell us on our Facebook page. Also, follow us on Twitter, at TV or hashtag Fresh Outlook. I'm TWB, or in the Twitterverse, that's at TW Brill. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you right here next time on Fresh Outlook. Nice job, everybody. Thank you,